it touches many of the lives. We hear from the people who have been impacted by this. We hear from the heroin and, and other uh, abuse, uh, people who are addicted to, to alcohol and, and heroin and opioids. We hear how it impacts families. We hear how it creates a huge need for foster care because families are being torn apart. So it talks to many of the people who have been directly impacted by this epidemic. You know, when you break it down that way, you, you bring something up that I think a lot of people, some people just don't understand that it, addiction is a disease. And it's not, I don't think, I don't, I don't, there are, I'd be hard pressed to think there's anybody who wants to wake up and have to find, exactly. scramble around to get a fix to make it so they can exactly. actually get on with and their yet day. There is that stigma that mm -hmm. is still out there that people that somehow that, that can't get over this, they can't recover, that have relapses or are somehow weak or, or they're not trying hard right. enough. Whereas people with other diseases who have relapses, you feel sympathetic for them right. and, and you understand the struggles that they're going through exactly that that stigma getting over that is a, is a huge uh, part of this ongoing effort this with this raising the awareness that spark is trying to do and something that you know you saying that triggers me to think this because you know i, I know about I've, I've i've worked with a lot of uh addicts families you know to to spread awareness about that but i i forgot about the foster care aspect I forgot about it is that. Huge. So many families are affected because the children may be taken away. One or both parents may end up uh, addicted and, and dealing with that, dealing with treatment, dealing with, re with recovery, or worse, being incarcerated. And it, it tears the families apart. If there aren't grandparents or other relatives to step in immediately, then there is that need for foster parents. And, and it's huge right now, especially in Franklin County. For some reason, uh, they've seen about a 200% increase in the demand, in the need for foster families right there. So they, they truly are calling this a, a crisis there. They need oh foster goodness. parents to step in and, and, and help take these children because the goal is to keep them here in the area where they're from. Otherwise, they could get shipped to another part of New York State, a new school, a new community. And that is so traumatic on, on the children and on the families. Exactly. It's bad enough that they have to experience this and the, in, in the trauma, as you say, of being ripped away from at least some of your familiarity at you know, such a young age is, is really right. so that's very why damaging. They try, if at all possible, to find foster families right here in, in the area where the kids live. Now, uh, so again, what, uh, what, so the screening is going to be at? Screening is Tuesday night. Tuesday night, uh, Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Stop by our Mountain Lake PBS studios. Everyone's invited. We're at 1 Sesame Street here in Plattsburgh. The best address ever. <laughs> <laughs> and we will be screening the documentary. It's 35 minutes. And then right after that, we will have a panel discussion. Who's on the panel? Uh, some of the guests we're going to have, John Bernardi. He is the executive director of the United Way. The United Way, of course, is, is helping, trying to step in and, and help the, the families that are affected by this. Michael Carpenter, the CEO of the Northeast Group, who many people know, a, a recovering addict himself, and also uh, the gentleman that's proposed a, a plan here in Plattsburgh to turn some of the former Clinton Community College dorms into t transitional and temporary housing uh, to help addicts in recovery, to help homeless people. He's got that project on the table. Connie Willie, who many people may know, she is now the CEO of Champlain Valley Family Center, and they have just opened the recovery campus in Schuyler Falls in the old youth center there. 18 beds, the first detox and treatment facility that's been so desperately needed here, right here in the Clinton County area. So she will be on the panel as well. Andrew Wiley, Clinton County District Attorney, will talk about the law enforcement angle. Chris Mazella, principal at Peru High School, will talk about how it's affecting children and students in, in, yeah. in the schools. And also Terry Moore, she is the uh, Director of Mental Health and Community Services in Essex County. And Suzanne Levine, she's the Director of Community Services in Franklin County. So we'll include both of those counties as well. And again, that's that's our listenership. So we are the Tri-County Station here. So if you are going to be around town and you can make it to that, and if not, if you miss the screening, you can catch it on Friday night. You can. So 7 o'clock is the screening Tuesday, January 22nd. Then the panel discussion right after. And then we will take that, put it together, both the documentary and the panel discussion, Friday night, January 25th, 8 p.m. And then it airs again on Saturday the 26th and Sunday the 27th. Well, before I let you get out of here, talk about your, your my favorite project is your, is your pet project that you do over there. What's going up with the, with the Mountain Lake Journal? And, uh, well, this week, uh, of course, the Garrow movie premiered at the Strand uh, last week. I was too afraid to go. <laughs> I, didn't go. Understandable. I couldn't do it. About 900 people turned out. Yeah. It, was a, it was fantastic. And so this week we have that. We have the premiere at the Strand. We, we talk with Lori Bailey, the director. We also talk in studio to uh, Jay Christensen, who played Robert Garrow. Oh, and also wow. Mark Valley, who played uh, Garrow's attorney in the movie. So they join us in the studio to 
uh, talk about the movie and, and a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that's really oh. cool. And also uh, Paul Larson this week uh, oh. is going to have uh, part two of the series he is doing on this opera that is being put together in the Adirondacks, uh, Northern Lights Choir in Serenade. Lake and composer Glenn McClure are combining their efforts and they are coming up with a full-fledged opera that that tells the story of Timbuktu which is such an amazing story of African Americans who were given plots of land in the Lake Placid area in Essex County in the 1800s so that they had the right to vote that within itself is an amazing story that you can learn all about at the John Brown farm but they're creating an opera, oh a full goodness. stage, full production opera. And Paul has a, the second part of his story that looks into the history of that and, and also how s slowly, piece by piece, they're trotting this out and will eventually have the full production. Oh, that is so cool. I got to get in touch with them. It will be cool. It is, it, so it will cool. Be well, Tom, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm, I'm glad to get you back on the radio because for people who don't know, that's where you got your start was in the radio. Can you believe it? I'm 30 40 years ago, <laughs> WEAV, uh, the local yeah, radio station, yeah. and, and, and yes, that was my, my start. Now, you you had the graveyard like I did, too, right? I had the graveyard, and on weekends, I think it was a 12-hour I show. know. When you told me you, <laughs> you did that, I said, well, I, I understand That's that. That's your start in the business. Now, you do what they tell you to do, and you do it with a smile. You do, you do and you love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Tom Halleck from Mount Link PBS, thank you for coming, and I look forward to many more of these. And if people want to find out uh, more, they can go right to the website and look at all of the schedule and all that good stuff. How Exactly, mountainlake.org, and you can go there. If you'd like to reserve seats for next Tuesday, please do that, and you can find out about this project, about the documentary, and everything else we're doing. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Tom, and I look forward to having you back in soon. Do you, do you want to lead into this? Jim Croce, uh, You Don't Mess Around the Gym. You want to do it? <laughs> Another great song from my childhood. You bet. <laughs>